Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week we're coming to you live from Daytona Beach, Florida, uh, where we are doing another summer camp. Uh, and I just want to show you some of our um, cool goodies that we have going on, some new things that we are doing. And uh, let's take a look. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. So first off, we've got our uh, Behringer X32, uh, and we are using it um, for the first time ever live with some Waves plugins. And uh, so I just want to talk to you about some of the cool things that we did as a fail safe because we are not using um, an actual sound grid server or anything like that. We're just using the USB card. Uh, so we want to make sure that there was little to no latency. And so far it's working really well, but we do have some kill switches. Um, so, first of all, um, what this computer is doing is it's receiving audio um, and we are receiving it, we're, we're sending it back out to the board live. Um, and, and this is why this is so crucial, and we have a tracks live session running at the same time. Um, sorry, my phone's so bouncy. Uh, so that we can do multi track recording. Um, so we want to make sure that everything's really stable. So a couple things. One, if you notice, all of my channels on Tracks Live are muted. Uh, and that's very important because if you don't do that, uh, you're going to get that sound coming back through um, into the console uh, from Tracks Live as well as from Studio Grid or Studio Rack, excuse me, Multi Rack. I'll get the name right one of these days. Um, and um, and so you don't want that, especially since uh, you'd be getting this uh, delayed effect um, because we set um, the uh, Tracks Live recording that we're looking at here to have the longest um, buffer size we could so that we don't bog down the computer. Um, but for latency issues, we've got one of the fastest um, buffer sizes we can on multi-rack. Uh, multi um, so, uh, if you have those other ones muted, you're going to get like a, a constant flanging, flaming kind of thing. Um, so we've got that going on. Um, let's talk about the routing. The X32, so what's happening is basically our sound is coming from our stage. We've got um, a couple of uh, digital snakes up there. They're sending signal to the X32. The X32 is then setting the analog gain, um, sending it through the card to the computer. Computer is doing its magic, sending the signal back through the card, and then the board is set to send out the card signal, not the digital snake signal. Um, so that means that we are hearing directly what's coming from the computer. Now, there's a couple of bad things about this. One. Uh, if anything were to go wrong with the computer, then you're going to lose all the audio. And two, it makes setting the analog gain a bit of a pain. So what we did was we set up a couple of snippets. Um, this is my assignable section over here. First one is usually for my effects. Second one is for the different monitor feeds. <coughs> Excuse me. The third one is up for grabs. And this week what we've got going on is it's set to be my snippets. So I've got at the bottom right hand corner a snippet that says waves. When I select that, the screen will ask me if I want to confirm. And that's what we're on right now, but it will receive the signal from the computer. If anything goes wrong, then I can go to the one right next to it that says live, and live will no longer be receiving a signal from the computer. It will only play what's coming straight from the S16s. Um, and that's also really nice when it comes to setting gain uh, during sound check. Uh, so I'll go into live mode, set my gain, and then go back to waves mode uh, so that I can then hear um, the affected signal from, from the um, multi-rack. Uh, and then finally, uh, this top button up here um, will just take me to the snippets page so I can see, you can see that waves was most recently one selected and so that helps me to know which mode I'm in without having to search around a lot. Um, so that works really well. Let's take a look at the multi-rack and see some of the different plugins we're using. A lot of these uh, we use in the studio every week. Uh, some of them are um, 
on a one week trial from Waves just to uh, see if we like them. We're looking at the snare channel right now. Every channel has the Waves NLS, uh, which is non-linear summer. Uh, it's basically emulating as if we we're going through an SSL console. Um, so pretty cool, um, pretty subtle, but nice. So that's on every single channel. Um, on the uh, snare channel, I'm using the uh, V-Comp um, for some compression and a little bit of grit. Um, this is a really cool uh, compressor when you want to um, uh, trash up a snare a little bit, kind of help um, give it more of a vintage distortion. Um, so you can see that the input is cranked a bit and the output is turned down. Um, so that works really, really well. I wanted to use the uh, Sheps 73, um, which I really like the drive on that. Um, however, it introduced way too much latency. As a rule, you kind of want to keep everything um, below 20 milliseconds. Um, that's when most people start to hear latency and that was pushing us into like 69. Um, but just having this on here, I think we're at like three milliseconds. Um, so we're doing pretty well. Uh, so that's the snare. Let's see. Um, here's the bass. We've got an NLS channel. Uh, I've got this like it's coming through a Neve. Every single channel, they're not all on, but every channel has an F6. This is a really cool brand new plugin from Waves. Um, it is a uh, dynamic EQ. Um, so you can't actually tell that anything's happening right now, but that four that's highlighted there um, is a um, filter that's set up with compression settings. So when he's actually playing, and again, we're trying not to, to do a ton of EQ because I wanna do that from the board in case anything happens. Um, but this is just acting as a compressor only at um, about 1K. Uh, and so what it's doing is when he starts playing, so there's one song where he plays with a pick, um, he becomes a little bit more mid-rangey um, to the point where it just needs to be controlled a little bit, but only for that one song. I don't wanna get rid of the mids all, the, all together or else his finger sound is muted sounding. So when he gets going, um, you can see there's a threshold and a range. Um, it can compress him up to 8 dB um, at that 1K. And so that's really, really useful. I've got that on pretty much every channel. Um, it's just not being used on things until I need them, but it's very low um, latency. Uh, and it's, I think it's still only $30 online. It's really cool. It's been very useful for, uh, for this so far. So we've got for the bass, we got NLS, we've got the F6, we've got a Puig Child compressor, um, and it's slammed. It's not actually compressing all that much, but it is adding some really nice overtones to the bass. Um, so you can see we have the input gain up, compressing a little bit, the output gain down, and then on the board itself, we have a compressor that's doing more of the actual dynamics compression. Uh, let's see what else is interesting on here. Um, I've also got my electric guitar, again, NLS, F6, this is set to where around 2K, it'll start to compress, so if he's, uh, if he's driving really hard, it's starting to become a little bit um, uh, in your face and covering up the vocals a little bit, that'll help to duck some of that out. Uh, and then we've got for compression, um, a CLA 3A doing a little bit for us, and then we've got some more compression at the board. <laughs> Let's see. On the tracks, just to give them a little bit more spread, um, we've got an S1 imager, just doing a tiny bit there. <coughs> On the vocals, NLS, F6, which again, you can't see it, but this is doing a lot of work. Um, we've got a low band that will um, compress the low end to help uh, combat proximity effect. Uh, and then we've got uh, five and six here are both focusing on different parts of the uh, harshness and um, the S's coming from the vocals. And then uh, a little bit of CLA 3A on vocals. I love this 
compressor on vocals, you can slam it really hard and it doesn't sound like it's being slammed hard. It just sounds really natural. You do need to be careful though because as a side effect of that, you can get some drum bleed going on, um, but we've got shield up and it seems to be working pretty well. Um, and then finally, let's take a look at the, uh, the MC microphones. Um, so this is MC1 for our announcements. Um, this microphone is um, oftentimes being taken out in front of the PA for games and that kind of stuff. So we need to ring it out pretty hard. Um, so on top of our uh, F6, which again is, uh, we're adding a little bit of low end for the vocalists who uh, aren't holding the mic very well. And for the vocalists who are holding it well, but talking very loudly and um, getting a lot of proximity effect, um, it's uh, taking that downward um, when they get really into the mic. And then we've got, again, five and six are cutting out um, some of the S's and just harshness coming from that mic. Um, so, but on top of that, we have this X feedback thing, um, which is pretty cool. We set the microphone up um, in front of the PA, um, basically pointing at one of the speakers, uh, hit this setup button and um, turn up the channel. As it would feed back, this would automatically pull out um, the offending frequencies. And then from there, we could tweak them to kind of undo some of the things that we didn't want to do and tighten it up a bit. Um, this works really well. It was really fast. Um, it didn't work as well as I had hoped on the headset mic, um, but we did get good results uh, in the end. Um, but this is really cool. This is um, just being uh, rented for the week, um, but I think if we, uh, for doing live events, this is worth, uh, worth purchasing. I think it's $89 at, on the Wave store right now. Um, and so we've got that on the MC mics. Um, another thing we do, we only have two um, microphones, but one of them can be switched out for a headset. So uh, you can see we have MC1, MC2. MC2 is receiving channel 15. Headset with two in parentheses is also receiving 15. We're doing a double patch here. Um, so that way we can use uh, different EQ settings, especially when it comes to that feedback destroyer. We didn't want to have um, the really intense feedback EQ on our MC microphone, or that might sound a little funny. Um, so it's got its own channels, but to make that work, so we got 15 and 15, but over here on our outputs, um, the MC mic is coming out of 15, uh, and then we just picked a, one of our first open channels for the headset mic. It can't come out the same channel. Um, it just wouldn't work, uh, otherwise you get doubling of sound. So, um, so the MC mic is coming out of 15, the headset mic is coming out of 13, and that seems to be working pretty well for us. Um, so cool, so that's our wave setup. Uh, so far it's been working flawlessly. Uh, and now let's show you some lights. So we're in a ballroom in Daytona. Um, this is with the house lighting pretty dim. And um, we made the sky pans. I'm gonna show you from a distance first what they look like and then we'll show you up close. Um, this is with a, a fair bit of haze in the room. Um, and so these are really cool. They're very vintagey looking. Um, they look really cool from a distance. They kind of act as blinders. They're, it's hard to tell on video. They're not insanely bright. They're more uh, just eye candy, um, but they work really well, especially if you program them in at the right time. Um, here's a little bit dimmed down to give you kind of a more just warm um, eye candy look. There you go. And then here's kind of at full. And then let me get the camera closer and I'll show you uh, what's actually going on with them. So these are our uh, DIY do-it-yourself sky pan lights. Um, if you look, <laughs> they're just a, uh, a metal um, bucket uh, with a light bulb built inside of it. Uh, this is a modif modified version of the, uh, the version that is online by I think it's pronounced Vos Church or Vaus Church, um, V-O-U-S. I will put a link to them in the description. Um, so we thought their design was awesome. We tried it out. We modified just a couple things. Um, their original version called for um, white paint and primer on the inside. Um, we decided to go with a little bit more of a retro look and we used a bronze paint, um, which I think looks phenomenal. Um, and then also they had their light um, at the bottom of the fixture. Um, looking at some of the pictures of the actual light online, like the 
the one that this is uh, emulating, it seemed like it would be more like the original design to have the light in the center. Um, so Jamie, who built these, um, decided to do that for this run. And uh, I think they look great. The other thing that we changed up um, for another project I'm working on, I've got this netting material um, that you can get from Home Depot. Uh, this is basically a plastic net that helps to kind of keep deer and rabbits away from your, uh, your garden. Um, it's $24 for a roll of, I think it's about 25 feet. Um, and, uh, and it just kind of helps to diffuse the light a little bit, kind of make it look less like a pan. Um, <laughs> and uh, and it, it does pretty well. Uh, and then that's just being held down by massive zip ties. Um, and yeah, these are really cool. They're not insanely bright. Um, this is actually at 100% right now for the bulb that we're using. Um, but they have a nice look. And like I said, they're eye candy. And they are way, 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 way cheaper than the actual legitimate light that they are trying to emulate. Um, and again, that light is awesome for like, you know, what it does. Um, but for church budget, uh, we are very happy with these. Um, and this is just the, the first time that we've, uh, we've made them. So we're gonna try them with some, maybe some different bulbs and stuff in the future. Um, but yeah, check out that link. Um, Vos Church, Vals Church, whatever they're called. Um, they did a really, really good um, tutorial on how to make these. Um, so it's the sky pans, uh, and then they're just being held up by some lights that we bought, or lighting stands that we bought like on Amazon. Um, and I think we've got um, some sandbags just to make sure that they're uh, nice and tight. So yeah, hope this is helpful for you. Hope it gives you some ideas of some cost-effective um, things you can try for your church. And until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.